Good morning. My name is Maureen Chung. Welcome to Daily Devotional of April the 8th. The Bible passage is John chapter 18, verse 28 to chapter 19, verse 16. The title is Justice in the Face of Truth. This is part two. Then the Jewish leaders took Jesus from Caiaphas to the palace of the Roman governor. By now it was early morning, and to avoid ceremonial uncleanness, they did not enter the palace because they wanted to be able to eat at the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and asked, What charges are you bringing against this man? If he were not a criminal, they replied, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. But we have no right to execute anyone, they objected. This took place to fulfill what Jesus had said about the kind of death he was going to die. Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea, Jesus asked? Or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew, Pilate replied? Your own people and chief priests handed you over to me. What is it you have done? Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. Oh, you are king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. What is truth? retorted Pilate. With this he went out again to the Jews, gathered there and said, I find no basis for a charge against him, but it is your custom for me to release to you one prisoner at the time of the Passover. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? They shouted back, No, not him. Give us Barabbas. Now Barabbas had taken part in an uprising. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in purple robe and went up to him and said, Again, Hail, King of the Jews! And they slapped him in the face. Once more Pilate came out and said to the Jews gathered there, Look, I'm bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no basis for a charge against him. When Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, Here is the man. As soon as the chief priests and others saw him, they shouted, Crucify! Crucify! But Pilate answered, You take him and crucify him. As for me, I find no basis for a charge against him. The Jewish leaders insisted, We have a law, and according to that law, he must die, because he claimed to be the Son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was even more afraid, and he went back inside the palace. Where do you come from? he asked Jesus. But Jesus gave him no answer. Do you refuse to speak to me? Pilate said. Don't you realize I have power either to free you or to crucify you? Jesus answered, You would have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. Therefore the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to set Jesus free, but the Jewish leaders kept shouting, If you let this man go, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who claims to be a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard this, He brought Jesus out and sat down on the judge's seat at a place known as the Stone Pavement. It was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about noon. Here is your king, Pilate said to the Jews. But they shouted, take him away, take him away, crucify him. Shall I crucify your king? Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the chief priests answered. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. During Lent, we accompany Jesus in his trials on Good Friday. I focus on the narratives from the Gospel of Luke and the Gospel of John over two consecutive days. I have titled both meditations, Injustice in the Face of Truth, Parts 1 and 2. Yesterday, we looked at the Jewish crowd of religious leaders. Today, the Roman officials, and most importantly, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. In the case of the Roman governor Pilate, he mocks justice three times when he says, I find no basis for a charge 
against this man. And Luke's rendering in chapter 23, verse 22, is even more to the point. I have found in him no grounds for the death penalty. However, in order to appease the angry mob, despite Jesus' innocence, he decides to have him flogged as a punishment and then released. Then he presents to the mob the bloodied Christ and the crown of thorns on his head, saying, Here is the man. And the mob instead begin to chant mercilessly, Crucify! Crucify! Matthew chapter 27 verse 24 records, When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead of an uproar was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I'm innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility, with one gesture of hand washing. Pilate shifts the blame of Jesus' death to the Jewish faith leaders, and they accepted it. In Jesus' previous discussion with Pilate, he expressed that for testifying to the truth of his kingship, he was born into the world. And to this, Pilate retorted, what is truth? In disregarding the truth, Pilate condemns Jesus to die on the cross. He places his own safety and convenience ahead of justice for Jesus. This is injustice in the faith of truth. When we come to Jesus, he is the kindest and most patient of all mankind. Under trial, he keeps his silence because defending himself against ridiculous accusations is pointless. He fulfills the prophecy in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 7. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent. So he did not open his mouth. But when his identity is brought into question, he admits that he is the Son of God and the King of the Jews. Echoing his father, he is the great I Am. In the end, soldiers ridiculed and mocked him by dressing him in an elegant purple robe. They crowned him with a crown of thorns, and they struck him in the face, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! The notice fastened to his cross read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. For his true identity, he was persecuted and crucified. Why this silent non-resistance? He knows who he is and how his kingdom will come to be fulfilled. For Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. He belongs to an eternal kingdom that can only be totally fulfilled in the age to come. Meanwhile, he suffers an ignoble death to usher it in. This is his destiny. What have I learned? Pray with me. Christ Jesus, your kingdom comes slowly, but surely. I need to wait and pray as I keep watch. I shall be actively working towards it in your name through my witnessing, but passively observing your ways and means as you bring it to fruition. I shall not overstep my boundaries, but let you lead as my king. You are at work, even though you appear to be silent. Your kingdom works like a quietly growing mustard seed. To you, my suffering and loving Lord, I pledge my allegiance and obedience, my King. Also, contrary to Pilate, I shall train myself under your Holy Spirit to live by your unshifting truth. Grant me, O Lord, spiritual discernment to distinguish between truth and falsehood. Let me choose your way, even though 
it may appear to be disadvantageous in the short term. You never make mistakes. Teach me to live with integrity at all times, my Lord. Jesus Christ, seeing your immense and unmeasurable love towards me, I promise to love you back the best way I know how, shallow though I am. I rest in your assurance of salvation and eternal home with you. I live in your peace while I'm on earth. I look forward to the time when I see your face in the heavenly realm. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In your name I pray. Amen. Please like and subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon to get new video updates. Thank you.